We've had a lot of disappointments in terms of monoclonal antibodies against the A-beta peptide, but we also have a lot of enthusiasm for this. We know that bapinuzumab failed, but we learned so much from bapinuzumab. Yes, solanezumab failed, but again, that was a trial that taught us so much about patient selection. Uh, and now, recently, aducanumab failed. We don't know why. Uh, that hasn't, hasn't been presented yet, uh, but I'm sure there will be enormous learnings from what happened in that trial. On the other hand, uh, gantanerumab is proceeding, uh, and they increased the dose uh, in that study very substantially. And one of the learnings was we were underdosing with monoclonal antibodies. Uh, the BAN2401 is proceeding, uh, and there's been a lot of innovation in the phase two of the development of that compound. So we have a lot of enthusiasm that, yes, we've had failures, but these failures are also lessons, and those lessons are being applied to the development of new monoclonals that give us enthusiasm for their eventual success. There's a real advantage to repurposing uh, because these drugs have already been approved for some other indication. For example, rosagiline, a drug that we work with in, as a repurposed agent, uh, has been approved for Parkinson's disease. Well, that means we already know its safety in older people. We already know the dose to use in older people, and that allows us a great head start uh, in terms of introducing this compound into development for Alzheimer's disease. We observed that rosagiline uh, had a beneficial effect on memory in studies of patients with Parkinson's disease but it had never been subjected to a great study in Alzheimer's disease. So we thought uh, the biology justifies uh, the use of rosagiline in Alzheimer's disease, and the preliminary observations in Parkinson's disease suggested it's beneficial for, beneficial for memory. So that was the platform that we used to say, yes, let's try rosagiline in Alzheimer's disease. There are, of course, many unmet needs in Alzheimer's disease research. Uh, I would say, for example, uh, that how do we best engage people in clinical trials is an unmet research need. That is, we need answers about what different types uh, of approaches would appeal to different types of populations people who have no clinical symptoms and need to be in prevention trials, people who, need, who, who, are, who have minimal symptoms and need to be in prodromal trials, patients who are more severely affected. They probably need to be approached differently, and yet we're under-recruiting consistently, I think, because we don't have enough information about how to recruit, how to reach out, how to get people involved in clinical trials. We already see very substantial progress in clinical trial design. Uh, so that, for example, we're using amyloid imaging or CSF in order to, to make sure that the patients have Alzheimer's disease when they come into the trial. Makes no sense to have somebody without Alzheimer's disease in an Alzheimer trial. So that's been a great lesson. One of the things we really need uh, are biomarkers that report on the drug effect, that is target engagement biomarkers, because we don't always want to wait for the clinical benefit to be expressed. If there's a biomarker that shows that the drug is doing what we want it to do and that it has reasonable predictive value uh, for the clinical outcome for the patient, then we could advance the drug based on the, on, on the target engagement biomarker. We really need that. That's one of the great deficits in the field right now. We are making progress in terms of outcomes. For example, the ADCOMS, the Alzheimer's disease composite score, has been used in recent trials and is more sensitive to change and therefore more likely to show us a drug placebo difference in mildly affected patients than previous instruments. We're seeing adaptive trials come into Alzheimer's disease. They've been used in cancer, they've been used in diabetes. It's time for us to use them in Alzheimer's disease. And now we see these innovations coming into Alzheimer's disease drug development.